Uh, I'm going to be uh, talking this morning about holding one another accountable. Uh, in our society, people don't like the idea of accountability. We don't like the idea of someone telling us what to do. But accountability might not be popular, but it is biblical. There are some great proverbs about accountability in the Bible. Uh, probably the most well-known is this one here, uh, Proverbs 27:17, which says, Iron sharpens iron and one man sharpens another. Holding one another accountable isn't about being critical. Rather, it's about, it's about helping one another. It's about sharpening one another. It's about encouraging each other to become more and more like Jesus Christ. Another proverb says this, like a gold ring or an ornament of gold is a wise reprover. Someone who holds us spiritually accountable is of great value. Another proverb says, he who hates reproof is stupid. I'd pick that one just for its shock value. How come you never see verses like that on Facebook? People who don't want to be held accountable are selling themselves short. They just want to keep doing things their own way, even if it's the wrong way, even if it leads to destruction. This morning, I want to look at how you are accountable, why accountability is a good thing, and how we can hold one another accountable in a God-honoring, people-affirming way. While we don't like the idea of being accountable, the truth is you and I are accountable to many people. If you're at school, you're accountable to your teacher to do your homework. If you're a worker, you're accountable to the government to pay your taxes. If you drive, you're accountable to follow the road rules. If you rent, you're accountable to your landlord. If you're married, you're accountable to your spouse. Like it or not, you and I are accountable. And what's true in our society is also true in our spiritual lives. You are spiritually accountable. Firstly, you are accountable to God. Paul writes, each of us will give an account of himself to God. One day you and I will stand before the Lord God Almighty and give an account for our lives. And what's true of us as Christians is true of every person who has ever lived. Jesus says, on the day of judgment, people will give account for every careless word that they have spoken. You can't just say whatever you like and think you'll get away with it. It might feel like you've gotten away with it, but one day everyone will give an account to God for every careless word that they've ever spoken. The Bible says, no creature is hidden from God's sight but all are naked and exposed to the eyes of him to whom we must give account. God sees everything. God hears everything. God knows everything. And God will hold us accountable. You and I and everyone else is accountable to God. Secondly, as Christians, we're also accountable to our church leaders. Paul says... Now we ask you, brothers and sisters, to acknowledge those who work hard among you, who care for you in the Lord and who admonish you. Notice two things there. Firstly, these people don't just care for you, they care for you in the Lord. Church leaders have been called by Jesus to care for his people. Secondly, they've been called not just to care for you, but to admonish you. To admonish people means to hold them accountable. In the English language, admonish is pretty negative. But the Greek word can be both positive and negative. Negatively, it means to admonish or rebuke or to warn someone. Positively, it means to instruct or to teach or exhort people. Leaders have been appointed by God to hold us accountable to encourage us in our faith and warn us when we wander off the path. We are accountable to our church leaders. In fact, the Bible says, Obey your leaders and submit to them, for they are keeping watch over your souls, 
as those who will have to give an account. Not only are we accountable to our leaders, but our leaders are accountable to God for how they lead us. So we're accountable to our leaders. Thirdly, we are accountable to one another. This task of admonishing God's people isn't just for leaders, but for all of God's people. Paul writes, And we urge you, brothers and sisters, admonish the idle, encourage the faint-hearted, help the weak. Paul isn't talking to the leaders here, but to the whole church. It's the role of every Christian to admonish the idle, encourage the faint-hearted, and to help the weak. So let me break those down for you. Paul starts with people who are idle. Uh, These people are either spiritually lazy in that they don't take their commitment to Jesus very uh, seriously or they're just lazy, as in they don't physically do any work. They don't help people, they don't support other people, they don't earn their own money to look after themselves. They could just be lazy people. Either way, we're to admonish them. We're to warn them that such a lifestyle dishonors God. God calls us to take our our faith seriously and to serve him and uh, those around us. So we're to admonish such people. Secondly, he mentions the faint-hearted. The word faint-hearted is used to describe someone with a, a broken or a grieving spirit. Someone who is discouraged or despondent. Rather than admonishing such people, we're to encourage them. When we see someone carrying a heavy emotional uh, low burden, uh, we don't add guilt to them. Instead, we give them the strength to carry that burden. Thirdly, Paul mentions the weak. The weak are those who may be physically weak, for example, the elderly or those who are sick, or, or those who are weak in the faith. Either way, rather than admonishing such people for their lack of faith, we help them. The word describes holding fast to someone or being devoted to them or not giving up on them. You see, when Cain asked God, am I my brother's keeper? The answer is yes, you are. We are responsible to care for one another. We are responsible to hold one another accountable on our spiritual journey we are accountable to god to our church leaders and to one another so why do you need to be accountable to other people why is accountability a good thing rather than a bad thing well i want to suggest that you need to be accountable for three reasons firstly because one day you and i will stand before god One day you will need to give an account for every thought, every word and every deed. One day you will wish that you had someone to help you to hold you accountable. Someone who admonished you when you went off track. Someone who encouraged you when you were struggling. Someone who helped you when you were feeling weak. One day you will stand before God and you don't want to be, as Paul says in 1 Corinthians 3, saved but only as through fire. Uh, Paul talks about followers of Jesus who build on the foundation of Jesus using wood or hay or straw, cheap and perishable building materials. And he says, each one's work will become manifest for the day will disclose it because it will be revealed by fire. And the fire will test what sort of work each one has done. On the day that we stand before Jesus, everything that we've built here on earth will have been burned up. It will all have perished. It will all be behind us. It will be ash and dust. And we don't want to stand before Jesus and say to him, we built nothing of eternal value. We just used cheap earthly things to build our lives. We had faith in you, but we never used it to build anything of significance. We need other people to hold us accountable because we want to build on the foundation of Jesus using gold, silver and precious stones, which are things that have eternal value, things that will survive into eternity. 
We need people to hold us accountable because when we stand before Jesus, we want to hear our master say, well done, good and faithful servant. Enter into the joy of your master. I encourage you to seek the hard words now. Find people that will speak the hard words into your life so that when you stand before Jesus, you won't hear any hard words then. Ask people to invest in your spiritual life now so that when you stand before God, you'll be ready. So firstly, we will one day stand before God. That's why we need accountability. Secondly, you need accountability because you are susceptible to sin. I need accountability because I am susceptible to sin. Paul writes, Let anyone who thinks that he stands take heed lest he fall. If you think you're okay, if you think you've got it all together, if you think you're safe from temptation, Paul says, watch out. You might not be as safe and as secure as you think. Jesus reminds his disciples, watch and pray that you may not enter into temptation. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. The Apostle John puts it even stronger. He says, if we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. We are all tainted by sin. We are all susceptible to temptation. We may want to do what's right, but our flesh is weak. Our wills are are, are, are fickle and our hearts betray us. In the letter of Hebrews it says, Take care, brothers, lest there be in any of of you an evil, unbelieving heart, leading you to fall away from the living God. But exhort one another every day, as long as it's called today, that none of you may be hardened by the deceitfulness of sin. We need to take care because we are susceptible to an evil, unbelieving heart. We need to take care that we don't fall away from the living God. And this isn't a battle that we fight on our own. Rather, we're to exhort one another every day that none of us may be hardened by the deceitfulness of sin. If we're not careful, the deceitfulness of sin will harden our hearts. And sin is so deceitful, sometimes we can't even see it in ourselves. We think we're doing things right. We think we're living the way God calls us to be. We don't see it. And that's why we need people around us to help us see the specks in our lives that we overlook. We need someone, you need someone to hold you accountable to your sin. And I'm not suggesting that you can just walk up to anyone and just point out the sin in their lives or tell them where they're going wrong. Accountability means inviting someone to do that for yourself. Accountability means asking someone to hold you accountable. You don't have the right to walk up to people. You need to ask people to walk up to you and to look into your life and challenge you about the sin that you're struggling with. Thirdly, you need to be accountable because you need support to grow in Christ-likeness. This is how Paul saw his ministry as supporting God's people on their spiritual journey to becoming like Jesus. He says, We proclaim Jesus, warning everyone and teaching everyone with all wisdom that we may present everyone mature in Christ. That word warn is the same word we saw earlier, admonish. Paul both warned and taught. He admonished and he encouraged so that God's people would become mature in Christ, that they would become mature in their faith, that they would become like Jesus. To the church in Thessalonica, he says, we exhorted each one of you and encouraged you and charged you to walk in a manner worthy of God. Again, he exhorted and encouraged and charged God's people to walk in a manner worthy of God, to live out their faith in Jesus Christ. When people started to become Christians in the city of Antioch, the church in Jerusalem sent Barnabas over to Antioch 
and he exhorted them all to remain faithful to the Lord. That was his job. He just went to that church and he, he talked to them about their faith and he encouraged them to remain faithful, to keep living out their faith in Jesus Christ. Later, Paul and Barnabas went back to all the churches that they'd started on their first missionary tour and, and they strengthened the souls of the disciples and they were encouraging them to continue in the faith. We need people like Barnabas and we need people like Paul, people like me, people that are sitting around you because our souls need strengthening. Our faith needs encouraging. We need to be exhorted to walk in a manner worthy of the Lord. We need accountability because we need the support and encouragement of God's people to become more like Jesus. We need accountability because we are so susceptible to sin. We need accountability because one day we're all going to stand before God and give an account for our lives. Having a wise reprover in your life is gold. Having another person who sharpens you is so valuable. It's because we need accountability and we need encouragement that avoiding it because we hate it is so stupid. It might make us feel uncomfortable. We might not like it, but it's so valuable on our spiritual journey. You and I need accountability. So how do we hold one another accountable? Uh, How do we hold one another accountable in a God-honouring, people-affirming way? Well, I want to give you three principles and then some examples. Uh, The first principle is to see each other as family. When you see your fellow church members as brothers and sisters in Christ, it changes your attitude towards them. It changes the way you speak to them. It changes your behaviour towards them. That's what this uh, series has been all about, how we function together as God's body, as the body of Christ. Paul's letter to, uh, two letters to the church in Corinth contain some of the most intense and confrontational verses in the Bible. But Paul says, I do not write these things to make you ashamed, but to admonish you as my beloved children. Paul saw these wayward Christians, these Christians that are making a mess of their, their Christian life. He saw them as his beloved children. He admonished them, not to shame them, but because he wanted what was best for them, because he loved them. He tells Timothy, encourage an older man as you would a father, younger men as brothers, older women as mothers, younger women as sisters. Our church isn't full of people. It's full of your brothers and sisters in Christ. It's full of your spiritual fathers and mothers. Paul says, let each one of you speak the truth with his neighbour, for we are all members of one another. We hold one another accountable because we're family, because we belong to each other, because we're invested in each other, because we want what's best for each other. If you don't see that person as your brother and sister, as part of your family, you have no right to hold them accountable. Secondly, holding one another accountable means speaking God's word into their lives. It's not your words that are going to change them. It's the words of God that will change them. The Bible says, For the word of God is living and active, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing to the division of soul and of spirit, of joints and of marrow, and discerning the thoughts and intentions of the heart. The thing that's going to confront sin in people's lives is God's word. The thing that will help them when they're feeling weak is God's word. The thing that's going to encourage them in their faith is God's word. Paul tells Timothy, All scripture is breathed out by God and profitable for teaching, for reproof, for correction, and for training in righteousness, that the person of God may be complete, equipped for every good work. 
our manual to teach, reprove, correct and train in righteousness is the scriptures. What people need to be complete is God's word. What people need to equip them to face the challenges of life is the Bible. We hold one another accountable by speaking God's word into their lives. Thirdly, we speak the truth in love. Paul says, speaking the truth in love, we grow up in every way into him who is the head, into Christ. The way we grow people up into Christ, the way we encourage them uh, to become more like Jesus, isn't just speaking the truth. It isn't just rattling off a few Bible verses. It isn't just to highlight their sin or where they're going wrong. It's to speak the truth in love. You have no right to hold anyone accountable unless you love that person. Tim Keller remarks, love without truth is sentimentality. It supports and affirms us, but keeps us in denial about our flaws. Truth without love is harshness. It gives us information, but in such a way that we cannot really hear it. God's saving love in Christ, however, is marked by both radical truthfulness about who we are and yet also radical unconditional commitment to us. The only basis for holding one another accountable is this radical love that Jesus has showed us. So what does this look like in practice? Well, Paul mentions three things. Firstly, he mentions speaking the truth with tears. When he says goodbye to the elders of Ephesus, he says, I did not cease day or night to admonish everyone with tears. You see, when we hear the word admonish, we think of an angry parent pointing their finger at their kids, telling them how they've got it wrong again and how they need to do the right thing. But the image we should see is Paul with tears streaming down his face his heart broken by the struggles and fears that his brothers and sisters wrestle with every day. We don't glory in the failings of the weak. Rather, we mourn with them. Paul tells the church in Galatia, my little children for whom I am again in the anguish of childbirth until Christ is formed in you. Paul admonishes with a deep gut-wrenching concern for the spiritual well-being of God's people. Secondly, Paul talks about speaking the truth with patience. He tells Timothy, reprove, rebuke and exhort with complete patience. When we admonish the idle, encourage the faint-hearted and help the weak, we want results straight away, don't we? I've told you what you need to do, so just do it. I've told you what God says, so just believe it. I've encouraged you, so just get on with your life. But we might plant the seed. We might water that seed. But it's God who makes it grow. It's God who changes people. It's God who applies his word to people's hearts and lives. So we need to wait patiently on God's timing. We need to be patient with one another. You can't do accountability with a hit-and-run attitude. Hit them with some truth and move on. Accountability means walking alongside someone, sometimes for years. Accountability is a long-term relationship, one that requires incredible patience with one another. Thirdly, Paul talks about speaking the truth with humility. Again, in his letter to the church in Corinth, he writes, I, Paul, myself entreat you by the meekness and gentleness of Christ. Paul entreats them. He encourages them. He exhorts them. Not in the domineering way of the world, not lording it over them like the Gentiles do, but with the meekness and gentleness of Christ. Paul admonishes not from a position over people, but from his knees. He says, brothers, if anyone is caught in any transgression, you who are spiritual should restore him in a spirit of gentleness. Isaiah says about Jesus, a bruised reed he will not break and a smouldering wick he will not quench. 
Speaking the truth in love requires great gentleness and humility. You see, people aren't always you know, committing huge sins that require confrontation. Rather, they're wrestling with doubts and with fears, with guilt and with shame, and they need gentleness and encouragement. Accountability means speaking the truth of God's word with God's love. It means speaking it with tears, with patience, and with great humility. I want to finish this morning by looking at some examples of how Paul held God's people accountable. Uh, Just three verses. Uh, Romans 12 verse 1. I urge you, brothers and sisters, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. Ephesians 4 verse 1. I urge you to walk in a manner worthy of the calling to which you have been called. And 1 Thessalonians 4 verse 1. Finally, dear brothers and sisters, we urge you in the name of the Lord Jesus to live in a way that pleases God. I want you to notice three things about those three verses. Firstly, we're to urge one another on. In all three verses, Paul urges his brothers and sisters to do something. Urging is the language of accountability of coming alongside one of your brothers and sisters to hold them accountable for the sin that's in their lives, to encourage them in the faith and help them grow in Christ's likeness. We don't tell people what to do. We plead with them. We encourage them. We entreat them. We urge them. The urging is the language of accountability. Secondly, we're to hold people accountable to the gospel. Paul urges us in view of God's mercy. He says, you know how God has been so merciful to us? That's the foundation which I'm urging you to live differently. He urges us according to the calling to which we've been called. So he says, God has called you to live like Jesus. and, And I want you to do that. I want you to live like God wants us to live. He urges us in the name of the Lord Jesus. He he reminds people of what the Lord Jesus has done. In his name, let's live differently. We don't urge people to do things because by doing those things, we become acceptable to God or because they will earn us spiritual brownie points. But because we've received God's mercy, because we've been called God's children, because we bear the name of Christ. The word we are to speak most to one another is the good news of the gospel. It's the gospel that changes us. It's what Jesus has done for us, for us on the cross that changes how we live. So that's what we urge one another to live out in our lives. Finally, we encourage each other to live out our faith. Paul urges us to offer our bodies as a living sacrifice to God. Paul urges us to walk in a manner worthy of our God. Paul urges us to live in a way that pleases God. We not only hold one another accountable to our faith in Jesus, in what we believe, but we urge one another to live out our faith in our daily lives, in how we behave towards other people. We encourage each other to live in a way That brings glory and honour to our God. Brothers and sisters, I need you to hold me accountable. I am just as susceptible to sin as the rest of you. And I need you to admonish me when I go astray, when my life doesn't match up with what I profess. I need you to support, uh, your support to help me grow in Christ's likeness. Because sometimes I'm weak and I need your strength. I need you to urge me to live out my faith in my daily life as well. And I want to urge you to find someone to hold you accountable in your faith journey. Whether that's someone in your home group or just another church member, find someone who will will admonish you and encourage you and help you. Someone who will sharpen you. Because such people are worth gold. When you stand before God, may you not be saved as by fire, 
but may you have been encouraged to be a good and faithful servant. Don't avoid accountability because that's stupid. Instead, seek out accountability for your spiritual well-being. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, the truth is, one day we will stand before your throne and we will be held accountable for how we have lived our lives. And Lord, we want, don't want to stand there just as saved as by fire with nothing to show for the faith that you, and the love and the, and the grace that you've poured into our life. But Lord, we want to hear the words, well done, good and faithful servant. Lord, we want to be held accountable for our Christian lives. Lord, we want to build on the foundation of our faith using precious things, things that will last. Lord, we want our life to be used by you to make a difference in this world. And Lord, we know that we can't do that on our own. Lord, we fall short and we struggle. Sometimes we're weak. Sometimes you know, we, 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 we fall into temptation. Lord, we need people around us that will encourage us, that will admonish us, that will help us when we're feeling down. Lord, we need leaders in our church to admonish us. Lord, we need brothers and sisters to encourage and help us. So, Lord, I pray that we would see one another as our family and that we would encourage each other. Lord, I pray that we would speak your word into each other's lives. But that, Lord, we would do that because we deeply love each other and we want what's best for each other. We want to admonish each other and encourage each other and help each other because we want one another to become more and more like Jesus. We want together to stand before him on the day of judgment and to hear those words from Christ, well done, good and faithful servants. Lord, we pray that we would find people to help us. Lord, whether uh, that's just one person or a group of people, Lord, may we seek out accountability in our lives to help us become more like you. For your honour and glory we pray. Amen.